and he was given that name was taken out and he was given another name then he had to serve in a babylonian government a heathen government a pagan government that has nothing to do with the godly heritage that that daniel and his friends were raised the third he was uh, he had to study at the university of babylon if you will again another pagan heathen university and the fourth thing he had to do was eat the meat that was at the table daniel does not take issue on any of those things except one of the four things that i mentioned he takes issue on only on one thing you know what that is which one the food it's that which personally defiles him he had issue with so I want us to think about this. There's a lot of rhetoric. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of political talk in this season, especially people who wants government done in a certain way during this time, during this season. But Daniel's example is one that he is not distracted, nor does it bother him whatever name he's been called, even though it was a heathen name. It's almost like my name is Jacob. Suddenly somebody calls me Krishna. That's a Hindu God name. That's exactly what happened in the case of Daniel. He has no issue with that. He's not even, not even bothered by that. He has no issue that he has to serve a, a king who actually did everything bad for him and his country and ripped him off for no fault of his. He is not, he's not taking an issue with that. We might very well face, as much as the Lord, because not I am saying this of doom and gloom, we might face a time where we have, we, uh, there things may not be as rosy, as good as it might be. Regardless of who is coming to the, the kingdom, regardless of who is sitting in the president's seat, there is nothing to feel bad about if one gets on the, on the seat that you did not like, and nothing to rejoice over some that you pref someone that you preferred because you think that person might be better or righteous. Because both are going to be, we are facing a situation that one we think that is godly or might be somewhat godly can also very well eventually turn his face or her face. Therefore, do not look around, look up from where the redemption comes. Hallelujah. This is the time for us to just look that which personally defiles us, Amen. that we should take issue on. But we are not, we cannot take issue on things and be, be lose focus and lose sight of what we ought to focus on as children of God, because this is where we need to be light. Daniel was in a situation where everything around him was darkness. All he had was him and his three friends. And there he became the light. There he showed up as a rising light for all to see and to know who Jehovah God is. This might be a situation that everything around us, whether the, the one who sits on the, in the White House is the one we preferred or not, regardless of who it is, it is our time for us, like Daniel, we might have just one or four of us to look and honor the godly word that he has given us and follow so that we can be light to the darkness not to get get into rhetoric fight with saying and and jesus doesn't need help for his name he doesn't need we don't need to defend the name you know the uh, unfortunately uh you know uh for example if you say anything against allah uh, you're you you're you are you're a death uh, you there's death threat upon you why isn't that if somebody says anything, blessings the name of Jesus, there's no death threat, unless you're one of those uh, Christians who will take offense like the Muslims do. There's no death threat because Jesus came to die and give his life. So we can be, there could be name calling going on. The word garbage has been a big uh, name and people get all offended about that. Then there's another name, they get all offended about that. We don't have time for all that. Let us focus that the Lord will do his work and put the right person on the throne. And let us guard our hearts to prepare our hearts from any defilement that comes. That is the one that we should be careful about. We don't need to be bogged down and get into emotional uh, 
arguments and debates which dishonors God's name, and you will not be able to witness the Christ in you through political arguments and debates, trying to defend one against the other. As much as you defend one, you'll find yourself that now you have to defend something that, that you are not able to defend. You'll find yourself very soon in that. And uh, so we have to be, let's just pray about that. Daniel, when he faced the, a very difficult situation that the king is asking, and, and it says that um, in, in uh, Romans 13.1, it says, every person be subject to governing authorities. So, whether there is a Democrat president or a Republican president, it says in Romans 13.1, there is no authority except from God and those that exist have been instituted by God. So whoever sits on the throne is going to be for our good. Let's not conclude that this is, not a, this is terrible for us, what ha whatever happens. Whoever God puts on the throne, it is going to be for our good, even though it may look like surrounded with darkness, it'll be for our good. When, the, when Lord God cursed Adam and Eve, it looks like we were talking about this last night. When there is God cursed Adam and Eve, as much as the word is curse, it was for Adam and Eve. So man's good, that curse was there. His dependence on God had to boom, be more increased. We look at it as curse, but it has actually turned it to be a blessing. This is, that's a whole other topic, but we won't go there. So right now, what, I'm, what we're reading here is that if there is, there is no authority except from God and those that have been, that exist in authority or have been instituted by God himself, no one else. So whoever is going to eventually go there, we're going to have to say, God put that person in there. And, and then it says that we need to pray for these kings. We need to pray for those in authority so that we may lead a peaceable and a quiet life. But in Timothy it says, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Things will get worse. It is going, not going to get better. It is only going to get worse, worse. And so, but as much as it be possible to live, live in other words that I'm quoting here, as much as it is possible to live in peace with everyone, do so. That's why we're not going to try to fight, but it may not be possible. Because the onslaught against, on us will be, will be strong, because the enemy is strong. He's, in the end days, perilous times are coming. Things are not going to get better and better, but actually worse, according to the word of the Lord. But we pray that we may lead a peaceable and quiet life. So let us take this moment. And, and so when Daniel did this, I want to just say one more thing. He separated himself for prayer with his brothers. While he wanted to, I wouldn't use the word rebel, but, but not comply with the king's orders. There were several orders. He was okay with all of them, except for the one that was personally defiling him. In the act of doing that, he was yet submissive. That's the point I wanted to say. He had a submissive separation from the rest. And while he did that, he prayed with his brothers for the situation, and God delivered him and his brothers. So we might, God very well in his goodness and mercy, what seems like curse, might orchestrate things in our lives where we have no choice but two or three, we are facing a major situation, the king's orders, or, or else it will be my head. We are facing the king's orders, it will be our head. That's when we say we have a submissive separation where we come together and pray for the Lord to bring deliverance to our situation. Right now, we don't have that situation yet. We're all enjoying the freedom, liberty, and justice that we all are able to experience in this country. But while we have this, we continue to pray. As Bina was quoting the scripture when she was praying, if my people will humble themselves, seek my face, turn away from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. Hallelujah. Let's all stand and let's just pray. Hallelujah. Let's open our mouths and say, ask the Lord to, there can be all kinds of chaos, all kinds of, we don't know how it's going to turn out, but whatever it is, let's pray that God will give peace in our hearts.
through all situations and we will look up for the Lord to do his mighty work and his, his justice. Hallelujah. Let's take a moment to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Name of Jesus be magnified. Hallelujah. Can someone lift up your voice and pray for this nation, for this week, especially Tuesday? Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Well, Lord, we came into a uh, difficult judgment that we have an election coming up and, and uh, which we are all very much concerned about, oh God. Well, Lord, we cannot do anything, but I just we learned today, oh God, you place the kings and the authorities, oh God, and we have to follow them and obey them. Well, Lord, we are praying for the election coming up this week hmm. on Tuesday, oh God. Yes. Well, Lord, we don't know what is good or what is bad. Lord, we are submitting the request unto you, O God. So yes, Lord. Select the right person, right person for our country uh, this uh, this uh, on Tuesday, O God, so that so that we can be uh, we can rejoice you, O God. Yes. We, we submit this request unto you, O God. Please bless us, guide us, lead us, protect us, and help us, O God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's be seated. Praise Lord. Brother Finney, please come up. Praise the Lord, buddy. It's um, been a long time since I've been with all of you. I think uh, last time I saw some of you was when there was, a, uh, there was one of the um, retreats in, uh, in Pennsylvania. Um, and so it was nice to see all of you. I enjoy spending time with you guys. It's been a long time. Um, so... Um, yeah, so I haven't been to the church here uh, a lot longer than that, but probably so. Um, it's nice to be here, and um, God is good, right? And so I was, you know, I was talking to Bob Uncle about uh, coming over. He, I mean, he's, you know, Faith's dad, and, uh, you know, I, I, I love coming and spending time with him. More than all of you, I'm sorry to tell you, but <laughs> I just love spending time with him. He's like, uh, you know, he's, 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 like a father, but he is like an older brother in, in another way. You know, he's like, he really is, is someone that I enjoy. I've always enjoyed talking to him ever since I met him and, and Molianti too. So, um, and just uh, their life uh, of, of service to God and obedience and humility really teaches me. Um, and so I, 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 through him, I love all of you too. So God bless all of you. Um, it's a blessing to be here. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, just about myself, I, um, I, I work as a chaplain um, in Philadelphia, outside of Philadelphia too, and um, been doing that for 20 something years and um, serving the Lord in whatever ways he has me do it um, in different times and in different situations. So God is good. And uh, today, I, as I was asking the Lord what to talk about, it just uh, came to my mind to, to talk about three holidays of significance in the Bible. Um, and no, I'm not talking about uh, holidays as, as we think of, uh, Christmas and New Year's, the barbecue holidays, and, and, and all the other things that we do here, and not even Easter, um, because Easter is not really a, a, a holiday in, in, in that sense in the Bible, but I'm just talking about uh, three holidays that were given to the, the Israelites. And uh, the reason I, 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 it came to my mind was because... Uh, of how the Old Testament is a foreshadowing of something that is to come. And uh, in, in, in the Old Testament, we find the Ten Commandments there. And that, you know, is, it foreshadows our holy, the holy expectation that God has for his people to live a life that is pleasing to God in moral perfection. You know, and we strive to do, you know, to live the way that, the, in, in response to his salvation. Um, there are hundreds of you know, ritualistic laws, uh, and a lot of those foreshadow the ideals that, that God expects of his people, and they were not able to do it. And it's also a, a reminder that we can't, 
you know, we, we will live for the Lord the best that we can, but we can't. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it by our own might and our own abilities, but we surrender to God. We surrender to God. And uh, that's, but that's a foreshadowing too. The appearance of, of God uh, in the Old Testament repeatedly again and again, we find that right in the garden where God is walking in the garden. And uh, it seems like he was doing that regularly uh, with Adam and Eve. He came to meet them. Uh, we find God uh, coming and meeting Abraham. Uh, we, uh, he wrestled with Jacob. He, uh, he met uh, Joshua. I love that. Because when you were just talking, when you were just talking about uh, how, how uh, whether, you know, what direction we go. And when we go to God, we find that God is not really for us or for them. He's, he's not for any side. He is... He's, he's, when he comes to that Joshua, he says, the captain of the Lord's army, I'm not here for you or them. I'm here to do the work of God, right? So when, when God comes, he does it his way, and we have to trust him. We have to go his way. So all, all, this, all of these things that we see in the Old Testament all foreshadows the coming of someone that is coming in the flesh, that, is, uh, that, that, we, that the whole of creation was looking forward to, and all the angels of heaven rejoiced when he came, Right? When he came in the flesh, born of a virgin. And uh, we find the sacrificial offerings of the, Old, of the Old Testament. And they're pointing to the sacrifice of God. Jesus Christ, the atonement for the sin of the world. And uh, just the same, even the special holy days of the Old Testament. They foreshadow greater things to come. And there's a lot of them. I don't have time to go through all of them. But I'm going to point just three of them out to you. Three of the holidays. Um, first of all, the very first one in the Old Testament is Passover, right? And uh, could you turn with me in your Bibles? We'll just read that one. I don't think we'll read all of the passages. Um, but um, Exodus chapter 12, um, we'll just uh, read that quickly. Uh, verses uh, three, through four, 3 through 14. Exodus chapter 12. And verses 3 through 14. And um, I can read that for you. Uh, to speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each Man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw or boiled at all with water, but roast it in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning. And when it remain, what remains of it until morning, you shall burn it with fire. And thus, thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, with sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For, for I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord your God. Your Lord, throughout your generations, you shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. And so we, even today we find that uh, they're celebrating this uh, wonderful uh, reminder of what God has done. Let's pray. Father, we just ask you that you would help us as we look into your word a little bit, that you would help us to uh, be reminded of uh, how great you are and how, what the things that you plan for us are and how to live for you in this world and glorify your name through us that we might be a people prepared for your coming when you come, Lord. We thank you. We look forward to that day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So 
we uh, in, in Leviticus chapter 23 it talks more about the feast and uh, you know and several feasts there. We're not going to read that, but uh, um, but if you want to read further, and I'll I'll just mention a co- some other passages to you as we're going through, so that you can read that on your own if you'd like um, later on. But um, you know, it's this happens. Passover happens on the first month of the Jewish calendar, as opposed to what the rabbinical uh, the, the rabbinical tradition is today, which they changed after uh, Herod's temple was destroyed in AD 70. They had to come up with a new religion, really. Um, and, uh, and so they, they did away with the sacrificial system because they couldn't sacrifice anymore. And they came up with a whole new, basically a whole new religion um, that in order, to, in order to stop their people from becoming Christians, <laughs> following the Messiah. And so they came up with a whole new religion, basically. And so the beginning of the calendar of the Jewish people is not the first month as God required of them in the Bible. And so anyway, what we find here is on the 14th day of the first month is when Passover is instituted. And why is that a foreshadowing to us? The very first holiday of the Jews uh, given by God through Moses is, is, is a foreshadowing to us because in, in the very beginning of our walk with Christ, it's our, the beginning of our lives as children of God. It's at the very start of our walk with God that we come into the family of God. We accept Jesus Christ into our lives. They passed over from slavery to freedom, right? They passed over from the dominion, we just read about the gods of Egypt that God judged. They passed over from the dominion of the gods of Egypt and from Pharaoh to Yahweh, the God of all creation. And they literally passed over the Red Sea. They walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. And so we found that they passed over. And when we receive Jesus as the Messiah, as the Savior into our hearts, we also pass over. And what we find is that the Bible says, the New Testament says that we passed over from death to life. Hallelujah. Amen. They passed over from slavery to freedom, and we passed over from death to life. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And again, he says in the same chapter, a couple verses down, he says, Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Hallelujah. So we were dead. We were in slavery. Whether we realize it or not, we were slaves to sin. We were under bondage, and we were destined to an eternal death. We were just destined for hell. We were those who were under the curse. And many people think that before they know Christ, that they were alive. There's a lot of people, I remember as a, as a new believer um, and, and being in a, in a Bible college at the time where a lot of people got saved. And I remember them saying, were new, newly saved within a few months and they came to Bible school, Bible college. And uh, while they were there, I remember a lot of people talking about their past life. And there were people that said, oh, I was in a gang and I was into drugs and I, was, I used to sell drugs. And, 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 and it, but the thing was, it was a kind of a glorification of your past life. And so in a sense of thinking like I was alive before, you know, and all of that got killed off. You know, that's, that's, that was, that's the kind of way, the way that many of us talk as new believers. But actually the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that you were dead. You were not alive. You were dead. And God made you alive through Christ. Amen? So it's not something to glorify what my life was like before I knew Jesus Christ, but what my life became after Christ gave me life. Amen? So so uh, it's because they don't understand. They, they were the walking dead. We don't understand. I, I did the same thing. I talked about how tough I was or how, you know, what I was like and that kind of thing. No, I was destined to hell. Amen? And Jesus made us alive to God. He opened our eyes. And so that's why I've heard people say that when, they, when Christ came into their lives, all of a sudden the, the, the sky appeared more blue 
and they could hear the birds singing. And that happened to me. I mean, honestly, that happened to me where I realized that there's something amazing that God has done in this world. And when I would read that the trees of the forest in the Bible, that the trees of the forest clapped their hands, I was thinking, wow, they're moving and they're, they're, they're in creation. They're rejoicing before you, O oh God. So the Passover is the start of our walk as children of God. We passed over from death to life. So in uh, John's first uh, epistle, he said in uh, chapter 3, verse 14, you can note that if you want, it says, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. So before we came to Christ, we did not care for anybody else. We did not care for those around us, and especially for the brethren, for the people of God. And there is a proof that we are God's family members. It's not just a matter of experiencing the goodness of God for me, right? But it's for what I'm doing for the people around me, especially those that are part of the family of God. We, we start behaving as Christ behaves because Christ is in us. He helps others, and I want to help others. And not only for my personal needs and wants, but I'm concerned about those that are brothers and sisters in the family of God. So it's, it's not just a matter of saying that I have passed over and it, I have things for me. It's for myself. No, if, if you don't love, if I don't love, then we are not a new creation. We have not become the creation that God wants us to be, and we need to make it right with God. Not just saying that I love God, but doing the love of God in our lives. So giving of your time, giving of your energy, your means, or whatever it may be, in order to help those that are, first of all, in the family of God, and then those that are outside of the family of God, that they should know Jesus Christ. The family of God is a church. Amen? So there's, and, and, and what about your own family? What about your own children? We need to be taking care of our own uh, family lives. So there's something special that I learned about from watching Orthodox Jews. You know, I, the, the owners of the company I work for are Orthodox Jews. And I, I realized that they really bless their people. They really care about their people. And they, they believe in their culture and share the knowledge of the pain of their past throughout their history, the, the historical suffering of the genocides that they experienced in the Middle East, the, the genocides they experienced in Eastern Europe, the pogroms and, and, and the Holocaust and everything else. That's like, a, that's an everyday thinking for them, the way that they think. They, they, and they see that as a commonality for all their people, all of their, uh, all over the world. It doesn't matter. And, and so what they do is they strive to do business together. They strive to grow each other. They try to challenge one another. Um, and, and, and they try to make sure that they're all safe. They, they, they want to make sure that their people are taken care of somehow or other. And, they, and, and I found that they don't lend and charge interest to one another as God told them to do in the Old Testament. So, you know, what, what, all that to say is that we as children of God should be concerned about our brothers and sisters. We should have a concern for those that are in the family of God. We should be not just about me, as those who have passed over from death to life, but those that care about the children of God that we have been brought over with. We should be concerned about all of them. Let us live as those who have passed over from death to life. Amen? If you, if, if you have not known a new life in Jesus Christ, and... Most of you may be, but I don't know. I don't know if all of you have known Jesus Christ. Maybe you've heard of him. Maybe you've learned about him here, but maybe you haven't uh, put your trust in him fully. And if you have not done that, th today is your day. Amen? Amen? Uh, today is your chance. The moment you receive and welcome Jesus as your Lord, as your master, you trust him in everything. And, and God makes you, the Bible says, Jesus said, that, I mean, the Bible says that you become a new creation. Amen? No longer the same. You were dead to God, and now, and you were living in sin. And you were on the highway to hell. Amen? But today, as the child of God, when you receive him, when you, when you put your trust in him, that's the moment. The moment that you put your trust in him, that's the, day, that's the moment that God does something marvelous in you. 
Amen. Whether you realize it or not, God's promise remains true, and he does something in you, in your life. Amen. So he brings new life to your being. And you are not destined for hell. You're not destined for the grave, as a, an atheist man told me one time, I'm going into the dark grave when I die. And he was not concerned. He wanted to hear another thing. He would not listen to another thing from me. He, and, but, you know, if you, the moment you put your trust in him, then you're not destined for the grave, and you're not destined for darkness, and you're not destined for hell, but you're destined for life with God. Hallelujah. Amen? So there is, there is a... Uh, another thing, when we, when we put our trust in ourselves, when we trust in our pride, then we have, we're breaking commands of God. Amen? The, the, the Ten Commandments I mentioned before, you know, God, says, God told them that you shall have no other gods before me. And when we start having our own pride and we start rejecting the word of God, what happens is that I'm putting myself, my ideas ahead of God. And I'm saying, no, I'm not going to do it your way. I'm going to do it myself. So I'm putting myself ahead of God. And we're breaking the commandment right there, the very first one. Amen? And, and not just that, when we have secret sins in our lives, when we have, uh, whether it's sexual sin, maybe we like to look at pornography, or maybe it's near porn. You know, it's not pornography, but we're looking at things that are close to being pornography. And, and, and we're starting to use our, use our eyes to sin against God. When we do these kinds of things, or whatever it may be, maybe it's a, making an idol for yourself. You put your, your, your spouse or your children or your immediate needs ahead of God. And when we start to do that, that is making an idol for yourself. So, the, you know, God wants to be Lord of our lives. When we, when we pass over, we make him completely Lord of who we are. It's not going to be my husband. You know that song, it's, not, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer, not my brother, not my sister, not my mother. <laughs> you know, but uh, we go, the, go through the list. But whatever it is, you know, we got to put God first in our lives. He must be Lord, and you and I need to turn and humble our hearts before him. We need to lower ourselves before him. Maybe prostitute ourselves before him. Whatever it is you have to do. Maybe it's laid on your car keys before him. I don't know. But whatever it is, we have to put it down before him and say, Lord, I surrender before you. You have to be Lord. You have to be Lord. And, and if you haven't done that in your life, today is your day. Amen. It's important. Today is your day. And, and, uh, and God will come into your life and he will transform you. Amen. But uh, before, we, before we just get stuck on this one feast, um, the next feast I want to mention to you is the Day of Atonement. All right, and that's in Leviticus chapter 16. And we're just going to look at three verses there, 3, 6, and 14. So we'll just look through that. Can somebody, if you have your Bible open, if you, you feel free to read it. So I, I don't want to waste time looking for it right now. Um, but if you don't have it yet, I'll read it. Oh, thank you. So this is how Aaron is to enter the sanctuary area with a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Can we go to six? Aaron is to offer the bull for his own sin offering to make atonement for himself and his household. And 14? Thank you. He is to take some of the bull's blood and with his finger sprinkle it on the front of the atonement cover. Then he shall sprinkle some of, some of it with his finger seven times before the atonement cover. Amen. So what we see there is that Aaron was to take very great care when he went in to the holy place. When he approached the holy place, he had to fear. He had to be in reverence before the Almighty God because uh, he himself was not without sin, right? And so he, what he had to do, he has to, he has to pay for his sins in a sense, with the blood of the animal. Then he has to go and pay for the, with the blood of another animal for the sins of the people. Amen? So uh, he's, he's, he's offering sacrifices because the animal's blood is a substitution. Amen? It's a substitution for his own life and for the lives of the people. Amen? So, and he was aware of all the special garments. If you read through that chapter there, he was to wear all the special garments. He was to wash himself, and he was to bring two young goats. One is a sin offering for Israel. The other will be presented 
alive before the Lord and set free into the wilderness. The word scapegoat comes from there because it, it, it's, it's set free. He puts his hand on the head of the, of the goat and, he, and, and, and the sin of the people. It, 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 and, he's, and he's set free, right? And he's able to go out of the... What happens to the goat, I don't know. But, uh, but anyway, Aaron had to make him atonement for himself. He had to, it's an atonement that he had to do so that he would not die before the Lord and then make atonement for the free people. So this was on the 10th day of the 7th month that the priest... High priest would make atonement, and uh, you can read all the details of that in, in, uh, in the chapter. And we also, we also had a day of atonement made for us, and our sins were forgiven on the cross of Calvary. So the day of atonement was a foreshadowing of the great sacrifice that was to come. Amen? The day of our atonement, the day of the atonement for the sins of the whole world was done on the cross of Calvary. We find that, that, that the sinless Lamb of God that John said takes away the sin of the world, that he was come and he was the only perfect and holy priest. All of Aaron's descendants and then later on the other priests that came, the other line that came, you know, none of them could make atonement for themselves, because they were sinners, they they could not uh, they could not come before the throne of God as as pure and perfect. There was only one who was holy and perfect and without spot or stain, and it was a Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And in Hebrews chapter nine, the writer of Hebrews says, "Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered." the most holy place, once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the blood of animals only postponed their punishment. It postponed their punishment. If Jesus never came, the blood of animals would not have done anything for them. It was only something that was foreshadowing what was to come. Hallelujah. Amen. It held off their judgment. The, the very fire of God's judgment, amen, that needed to come. It, it didn't come on them because Jesus was coming and God the Father saw his son's blood as, 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 as uh, the, the blood of the animals was foreshadowing the blood of his son that was to come. It pointed to a more precious blood that would be shed. So Jesus came to do it once and for all. Hallelujah. He's the author of life. So he had the power, he said, to lay it down and also to take it up again. Hallelujah. So he not only died and shed his blood on Calvary, but immediately, it says, on entrance at the Father's throne, he took his own blood and poured it out for mankind to redeem us from the curse of sin. Hallelujah. From the curse of not being able to keep the law. You and I could not keep the law. We, we disobeyed our parents. We dishonored God. We lied. We sinned against God. We used our mouths for whatever we use our mouths for. We use our minds to sin against God. But yet Jesus came knowing what we are, knowing who we are. And I speak of myself. He knows what I am. And he died for me anyway. Hallelujah. See, Aaron was a servant is what the writer of Hebrews says. Aaron was a servant, right? And he could never do what Jesus did. Because he was limited as a priest. He was limited. And so Jesus was not a servant. He was the son. Amen. Amen. And so the son has full freedom to do what needs to be done in his household. And so he had the complete authority and the freedom before the throne of the father. Hallelujah. He shed his blood and his blood flowed uh, his, 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 on the, upon the altar and upon the holy place and upon the mercy seat of the Father himself. He didn't have to do the sprinkling in the, in the representations that were done on, on earth, but he did it in the presence of the Father himself. Hallelujah. So that sinners like you and me could be bought into his family. Hallelujah. Amen. So the one, our day is coming when we shall be completely redeemed. Hallelujah. From this body of sin and changed into the presence of of the Lord. Hallelujah. With the Lord forever. Hallelujah. See, our holy day 
of the Old Testament is the next one that we're looking at. The final holy day is, uh, is the, the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's looking forward. Amen? That's the last one. And that's, what's, that's beautiful because the first one tells about our Passover. You know, and the last one points us to what is coming. Hallelujah. Amen? So I, I, I would love to read through this, but it's a long, it's, it's another, uh, you know, several, several verses there. Leviticus chapter 23. And you can read that on your own at home. I don't want to prolong uh, speaking to you. But uh, what it says is that they would live in booths for seven days. And the purpose of that, of that uh, the, the, the Feast of the Tabernacles was that the Lord wanted them to remember where they had come from. Amen. It was the Lord that brought them out of Egypt and he brought them and, 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 and he, they lived in booths, in meaning tents, in the desert for 40 years. Amen. But it was also where they were with the Lord. They were no longer in Egypt. They were free from their bondage and they were living with the Lord. They were living because the presence of the Lord was with them. And, and they were, during that time, they would be remembering what God brought us out of and delivered us from that. And we are now in the presence of God. We have the freedom to worship Him, to rejoice before Him. They were with the Lord. And this was the last feast if, uh, of the year for the people of Israel. So it points to the final stage that awaits us as the children of God, as the people of God. This is the final stage of our lives as those saved by the atonement blood of Jesus. So there is an eternal tabernacle where we will be with the Lord. Amen? This is what we are looking forward to, where we will be with the Lord. So we shall ever be with the Lord. We are rescued from our Egypt of our lives to be redeemed. Amen? Even in eternity, we will remember what God brought us out of. We were in darkness, and he brought us to light. We were in slavery, and he brought us to freedom. We were bound, and he set us free. Hallelujah. Amen. We were slaves of sin like Israel was slaves of Egypt. Yet God Almighty brought us out the shed blood of the Lamb, and we will ever be with the Lord, with him. But it was his love that delivered us. It was not me, O oh Lord, but it was you. We will sing of his mercy and his grace and rejoice before our God for all eternity. We will remember his faithfulness for all eternity. We will sing like it says in Revelations. So anyway, going back, if you have heard the message about Jesus, and if you've known the message about Jesus, but you're holding off, if you're waiting, and you're thinking that I'll wait for another day, I'll wait for a time when I will surrender myself you know, I'll wait till the near the end of my life. You know, I'll wait, you know, till my, I've had people tell me that too. You know, I'll wait till, you know, I'm on my deathbed. You know, I'll figure that out then. You know, if, if we're going to wait that long, you know, it may be too late. I remember a song that sang, live for the Lord and look to the future. Get ready for the judgment day. Though you may be here today and gone tomorrow, for tomorrow will be too late. Amen. Tomorrow may be too late. And so tomorrow belongs to no man or no woman, or no child, right? Tomorrow belongs to the Lord. And so today is your day of salvation. Today is our day of salvation. So if there's anything that I could tell you today is let's walk with the Lord today. Let's trust him today. Let's put our hope in him today. Let's trust him as, as, uh, as, as, as the Lord of our lives and everything for us. Amen? So uh, today is your day to receive him. Amen? And if you have not received him, make it your day. That's my message for you today. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your presence today and for your word today. We remember how you foreshadowed so many things in the Old Testament. Tell us of what is to come, what awaits us as your people, O oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, that uh, your word uh, testifies to us that, that you, Jesus, are coming back. So help us. As we await your coming, Lord Jesus, help us to make our lives right, Lord. Help us not to wait till the last moment, oh God, to make things right. Help us to walk with you in this life, Lord, with everything that we have. Give us strength to walk with you. Deliver us, oh God, from ourselves. Deliver us from the flesh. Deliver us from Satan. Deliver us from the lies of the enemy, from deception, oh God, in this world today, God. We pray that you give us a clarity in our minds, Lord Jesus. Help us, oh God, as we head into the election to know what it is your will is and to walk with you. Help us to walk with you in every situation, oh God. Help us to hear your voice, oh God, 
Fill us with your spirit and give us discernment, Lord God, that we might know that what your spirit is saying, that this is the way to walk in it, Lord Jesus. Help us to trust you above everything else in this world. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for this church, oh God. And we thank you for this church's faithfulness to you, God, and for its love to you, Lord. We pray that you bless them abundantly and may they continue to walk with you in purity and uh, in godliness, in love. Oh God, bless them, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, brother, for the word you shared. Praise the Lord. Um, we want to open up for testimonies and uh, anything that you have in your heart to share. I believe uh, Sister Elsie has something to wanted to share. So come on, Elsie. And then after, Sister, uh, others can come up too. Praise the Lord. Are we are blessed. Um, last week, uh, I felt like in the church, from the beginning, the song sang that the storm comes, trial comes, end with the, he sang a song, two brothers share. So I felt like uh, I am in the wedding house with a feast, with a lot of meat and the food in front of me. How we rejoice. I re re rejoice. King wedding that from the beginning to the end, it was not keep burning in my heart. Everything is talking, not in vain. Everybody was saying from the beginning, the song or the end of the song in between, especially that two brothers in the Zoom, they share. Came in my mind to sh share something is bothering me this full week uh, keep that reminding as a movie of after we see that scene like i felt like some of the two three words i want to share if that helps me too much too much if i say i was too much rejoicing that that feast and today that brother finney uh, share it's all connected to the Holy Spirit, sinning nature. Why I said start with the, are we blessed? Yes, we are blessed. Psalm 32, verse 1 itself says, Blessed is the one who, blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord count no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit I like to hear i like to read a little bit more in malayalam so i'm just reading the same sentence langanam shemichum paavam marachum kittiyan bhagivan yehova agartham ganakadade aadma vil kavadam illade irikkuna manushan bhagivan born as a sinner deserve to go to the hell from the darkness God pull out from the darkness to see the enlightenment of the heart. Like that today, that song was, Sister Mary was singing, but also connected. We are not desired to get anything from the God, but God put us to that blood cross on that, Amen. shed upon us. Like your brother was sharing the Hebrews chapter nine verse, but whatever that verse, he shed upon that cross something is bothering i don't know whether I just i was asking lord how to pray i don't know how to pray teach me how to pray like a disciple asked so i was reading that uh, matthew 6 verse uh, 10 on which the this god teach them pray then like this that one of the words strike me, verse 12, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. There was a big question mark in front of me. The word says, as we also have forgiven our debtors. The question mark asked me, did you forgive others? Did we forgive? 
am claiming here this word as as we also have forgiven our debtors forgive our debts god is teaching me maybe it will help for one person so i wanted to share the matthew uh, mark 11 verse 23 onwards and jesus answered them how faith in god truly i say to you who was says to this mountain be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believe that what he says will come to pass it will be done for him therefore i tell you just pay attention to that word therefore i tell you whatever you ask in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours that much when we are reading so nice when you believe and you pray without doubt but this condition underneath the word and whenever you stand praying forgive if you have anything against anyone so that you uh, father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses to tell you that in church in congregation we come together in this church to ask abba father to calling upon him so we forgive that's the main i i don't know how to put it in a short like other pastor says but i'm just my main point is forgive others if you have anything grudge against anything whether you done it or whether i done it does it matter as a child of god go whether it, it may be it is there completely fully fault but still don't count on that go and ask sister go and ask brother did if that hurting just go forgiven us sinning against and not only really forgiven us hiding sinning we all are doing it because as far as the flesh is on the body we are a sinner even though we are a children of god but god is covered covering us that's why we are standing right now to abba father to call we are not holy one song is keep on prompting me in my heart vishuddhi thigachu nee oringa nilka means uh, i don't know how to put it in english in uh, be holy unless and until you holy you will not see god we are not holy anyway we cannot but god is covering us we the holy spirit will prompt us go and kneel down and pray repent repent the kingdom of heaven is near jesus said in all the message repent repent the kingdom of heaven is near as a children of god and one more just a word that i just wanted to pray just quickly pavam uh, sorry um second corinthian chapter 5 verse 21 we all familiar with that by heart for our sake he made him to be sin no new no sin is like a, i like mary uh, so mary or say listen that song read it then it is Hallelujah. coming again oh then we are always we are simply singing and going but when somebody say that listen pay attention that same sentence have a little different meaning like so for our sake he made him to be sin who he no knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteous of god hallelujah father in heaven Oh Father in heaven, hallowed be Your name. Hallelujah. Your kingdom come. You will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, yes. and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. Yes. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Have mercy upon us, O oh Lord, in this church, sitting from the back to the front. O oh Lord, covered with the blood of Jesus, O oh Lord. O oh Lord. We are sinners. I'm a sinner. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Let us to go to the closet and cry out. Nobody is hearing. A loud voice. Nobody is there. Husband is not. Children is not there. When you come alone, encounter with God and cry out. Cry out. Church, cry out. 
cry out like Bina said today that second chronicles i think 714 broken heart broken spirit he will not despise he bless with the broken hearts not our blessing all the time blessing 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 nice job good job good car good home everything is blessing i'm not saying that is not the one but oh lord where is the blessing even if we are in a dust you came on the cross you shed the blood upon us for no sinner become oh lord forgive our sin and trespasses and wickedness envy jealous arrogant all kind of bad poison is on me how mercy upon us oh lord this church should alhamdulillah in the name of jesus blessed uh, us oh lord so this small congregation come in unity to in one accord to bless upon us for the in our sinning nature to be healed with your stripe we will be healed in healthy ways and also same way with his stripe and with his mercy alone the sinning nature, wickedness, and envy, and unforgiveness, all that arrogant nature, stubborn nature, boasting nature, in the name of Jesus, step it upon, oh Lord. We are claim, claiming that we step it and push it back like that song we heard. It. No turning by, no turning by. We have decided to follow. The cross is in the front. Well, it's in the back. Let the word not come in our heart, O oh Lord, even though we are in the world. Let dust of the eyes. From all the organs, eyes, mouth, all the organs internally and externally, whatever, O oh Lord, cover us with the blood of Jesus. If the hand is going to do the sin, tie us, O oh Lord. We don't have any power. Our tongue is the one who is doing the wrong thing. Tie our tongue, O oh Lord. Our eyes is the one is doing the wrong. O oh Lord, touch our eyes, O oh Lord, with your power. Our mouth is the one is the more. Pro we say we are not the mother, but we are doing the murdering. When you hurt the brothers or sisters, you are literally killing them. Touch individually from here, Mabu Angal, to the last corner of the kitchen. Oh Lord, their whoever is not attending, we are praying for them, especially for our children, oh Lord. Before the children, we have to be cleansed as first, oh Lord. Cleans us as the parents first, oh Lord. Let our generation to generation to offspring to offspring to worship you, oh Lord, in the truth and spirit. Nothing to be boast, let us to boast only a cross. Who is a good preacher or who is somebody? Though they are better than this. Nobody is better than nobody. God is the one. Oh Lord, please do not turn your face from the wickedness of what we are doing. The poor man called, he heard the prayer. The poor man called, he heard the prayer. But the my call, he heard the prayer. Son of David, you turn and look at the people who are crying. We desperately we need our home to be secure with the blood of Jesus. Let our children to be blood of Jesus to come. Let them not to the go in the worldly ways, O oh Lord. Oh, Shapade Katal Hamdujara. All the children who are here and who is not attending, and the offspring and offspring who are having, we are blessing in unity for them to be let uphold the God as a banner. Jesus is the way. In Jesus' name, oh Lord, please bless thee and keep thee. Please make his patience upon thee and be gracious to thee. Lift up his countenance and give the peace in Jesus' name. Jesus name i just want to share the forgiveness whoever is deaf to do that please do so today is the day for the salvation
morning, church. Um, had the privilege yesterday uh, visiting Blackwater National Refuge and the Harriet Tubman Museum and Visitor Center. I'm not sure how many of you have heard of Harriet Tubman. Um, I've heard of her name, but I didn't know who she was, uh, nothing much about her life story. It was quite eye-opening. Um, David and I went out, and the primary purpose was to like go for a bike ride and, and see like birds and whatever. But we, ha we had the chance to like go into this museum um, and just listening to her life story. Um, if, if you're not heard, I would definitely recommend looking her up. Um, she's such a great testament of who a true follower of Jesus is. Um, she was a slave from birth. What's the name? Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. Yeah, yeah, underground uh, railroad. Like, so she um, was a slave. She was born in Eastern Shore, Maryland, near Cambridge. Um, she was a slave from birth, um, but she still had a conviction to follow Christ. Um, she got hit in her head with a stone when she was like 15 or 16 years old, married someone else. Um, they were supposed to bond her and sell her off, uh, but she escapes. Uh, she escapes from her slave masters. Um, Maryland allowed slavery. Pennsylvania did not allow slavery. So she escapes all the way from Cambridge, Maryland and goes to, uh, goes to Pennsylvania um, somehow, like that's a treacherous journey. Uh, but all along the way, there were people, uh, we don't, uh, they don't say much, but there were people that helped her, uh, protect her from like the bounty hunters that were trying to like catch her. Um, she eventually goes all the way up to Canada because Canada was a free country for, for slave. There was no slavery there. Um, and throughout her life, there's a proclamation of Christ. She, everything she did, she glorified Christ. Uh, and she says all her uh, actions were driven by the Spirit. Um, so such a great testament, and not just for her own self, like she goes to Pennsylvania, but then comes back to Maryland 13 times to rescue people again, like taking that treacherous journey back and forth 13 times, saving 70 people. Um, and even after slavery ended, um, she continues to work for rights of various people, women suffrage, and so on. Um, one other eye-opening thing, in today's world, we see uh, US is uh, more secularized and you don't want, people don't like to proclaim God in anything. Uh, but when you look at her life, you just cannot separate Christ from her life. They had to mention Christ pretty much every other sentence of her testimony because everything she did was driven by that. So that gives us a great example of how to live our life glorifying Christ at all times. So I was so thankful for uh, getting to know her life. Um, and hopefully if you ever get a chance, please go look her up. Uh, it's a two hour drive from here to Harriet Tubman Museum. Uh, it's a great museum and would definitely recommend it. Thank you. Holy Spirit, move in me, take my whole life and let me be just a vessel all for thee, Holy Spirit, move in me. Let's sing that as a prayer from our heart. If you are unwilling to sing it from the heart because of hidden secret sin, unforgiveness, then this is the time to repent and get right with God and do it now. As our brother has spoken, the Lord has spoken through him. Today is our day. Tomorrow does not belong to any one of us. Whether you are a newborn infant or you are a hundred year old person, tomorrow belongs to the Lord. Today belongs to us. He that hath then hear, let him hear what the Spirit has spoken. Sister, as quoted from the message last week, prayer. 
and then the pastor Samuel spoke about following Jesus. Luke chapter 9 verse 23 onwards. You cannot follow Jesus unless you deny your self-life. It's, it's no way. You can pretend to be a Christian and there are a lot of them. But the Lord will say in that day, many will come and say, Lord, we have done many things in your name. Many miracles we have performed. But the Lord says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Because you have done it for your own self-glorification. The gift that the Lord has given was not used according to his will. But you have used it in the pride of your heart. And the pride grew. Men worshipped you or honoured you. And that is your reward. It ends on this earth. But when the Holy Spirit moves in our life and takes over our life, then we are the bride. Amen. That is why in the book of Revelation it says the bride and the spirit say, come, O oh Lord, come. You cannot say, come, O oh Lord, unless you are, your heart is given to the Holy Spirit. You know, you can preach, you can do all sorts of things, but when the moment comes and say, come Lord, come, that is only possible for one whose heart is filled with the Holy Spirit, who realizes that my kingdom is not of this earth. I am a pilgrim and a stranger. So the Lord has been speaking to us from the Old Testament, from the New Testament, through word of testimony, exhortation from our sister. Please, let's get right with God. And you cannot get right with God if you are not right with people. It's a, it is a lie of the devil, thinking that you are right with God when you are not right with your own brother, your own sister. Bible says, in as much as it is possible, be right with every person, right? I mean, there may be somebody who curses me out because of my color or because of my height or whatever, whatever. But that's okay. That's not within you. It, as much as it is within you, you should not harbor any kind of feelings of unforgiveness or hatred or bitterness. It is not Christ-like. Jesus died for, even when we were sinners, he died for us. That is what Jesus has done, right? And he has done. So now he opened a new and living way where we can go into the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace for the future. Mercy for things that may not have been right with you. But God's desire is that you don't live on mercy. You live by grace. I am what I am, not by the mercy of God. I am what I am, as Paul said, by the grace of God. The grace of God that gives us grace to overcome sin in every form of it. Every temptation. We don't have to yield to sin. If you yield to temptation, then you become a sinner. And then you have to go for mercy. But if you are tempted... Jesus was tempted, right? In all points, Bible says, Jesus was tempted in all points just as we are. But did he yield? Never once. And thereby he became the perfect sacrifice on this earth. He lived that perfect life. God's desire for us is the same. But what is his desire? That we will not yield to temptation and produce sin, which deforms us, which defiles us. And in the Old Testament, if you went into the Holy of Holies, what happened? You fall dead. Now, many in the church are spiritually dead. You may be alive intellectually, but not spiritually. And if you are not spiritually alive, 
then you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You may have a form of godliness, but denying the power to transform us into the very image of the Lord Jesus Christ. As many as have this hope, they purify themselves. God is able. Get right with God and do it now. Today is the day for us to get right with God. If you have been playing church, never had a repentance experience, today is the day. It's never too late. If you are living in secret sin, today is the day to get rid of it. And God's desire is that we can say Maranatha, as in the Feast of the Tabernacle, that Jesus is coming back. Who is he coming back for? For everybody who comes to church? Jesus is coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. This is God's word. Don't let anyone deceive you that Jesus is coming back for everybody. You know, there is this whole uh, thing called Unitarianism. Unitar Unitarianism. Unitarianism. Uni? Yeah, you understand why? That means, Unitarianism means everybody is God's children. And therefore, no issue. He's just going to let you all in. And so that you can make heaven into hell. Right? Right? That's the purpose, right? If everybody goes into heaven, those who belong in hell, they are going to make what? Heaven into hell. No way. You know, I mean, you have to get right with God. See, there is this thing about the pig, you know. What, what's the difference between a pig and a lamb? And you, you, know, you take a pig and a lamb and make them the most beautiful bed. Right? And what happens to the pig? Pig will wallow in its own mud. It loves sin. It loves dirt. Now, I have, have some experience in having some goat back in India. Now, about the goat, it always wants a higher place. And that is where it will lay down. Right? But it moves away from its bed to do its thing. But the pig will always make a puddle and wallow. God has called us not to live like a pig in the church. He has called us. Now, does that mean that, you know, when you go look at the goat, sometimes it has a little spots here and there. And then it is, it's trying its best to clean itself up. You know, it's just shaking this way, that way. But then, as the owner, you go and clean it up. Because it loves to be clean. And that is what the Holy Spirit does. He is always trying to help those who want to live a holy life. But if you are a pig, don't think that Jesus is coming back for you. As many as have this hope, what do they do? They purify themselves every single day. Get right with God and do it now. Shall we all stand? Holy Spirit, move in me. Take my whole life and let me be. Just a vessel, all for thee, Holy Spirit, move in me. One more time, all for thee. If all is not given to them, he will not accept your offering. You cannot keep part of your senses, part of your thinking, Part of your social media for yourself. Oh no, that's a life from the pit. 
Holy Spirit, move in me. Take my whole life and let me be just a vessel all for thee. Holy Spirit, move in me. Precious Lord, this is our prayer. Holy Spirit, take control of every heart, O Lord, that as we depart from this place, if we have, if we have harbored bitterness, envy, jealousy towards anyone, O Lord, Father, forgive us, and that we will get right with you. First, getting right with the people. Help us, O Lord, that together, when we come together, we will come as one person, all of us led by the Holy Spirit. And that there will be great revival starting here, O oh Lord Jesus. Amen. And that revival fire will kindle and revive this nation. This nation needs Jesus. Not this president or that president is going to save us, O oh Lord. It is Jesus, is the Savior of the world. He, you are the one who died for us, O oh Lord. Oh, you are the perfect sacrifice. Rule and reign each heart, O Lord. And we pray for this country, that the Lord, for the elect's sake, O Lord, that we may live a peaceable life, and many sinners will have an opportunity to get saved, O Lord, that the gospel of the kingdom can be preached throughout this nation. Lord, we pray that thou will not shut the doors of the heart, O Lord, and the evil powers will not mock your name, O Lord Jesus. The laws of this land will be open for the gospel, Lord. Amen. Father, we praise you and thank you. Heart of the matter is the heart, O Lord. Let the hearts of the people. Lord, you say you are able to turn the hearts as the water is turned, O Lord Jesus. Therefore, we pray, Lord, people in this nation will be turned to thee. Lord, we remember the revivals in time past, O Lord. When the country has been in a place of wickedness, you have turned, O oh Lord. You revived, you brought repentance to a multitude after multitude, Lord. For such a day, we pray, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Have your own way. Destroy every work of the enemy, Lord. We thank you for our visitors as they depart and travel back to Philadelphia. Be with them, O oh Lord Jesus. Especially we pray for Philip, O oh Lord, that you have brought him into this country. That all that God has purposed in his life shall be accomplished. Or all that the enemy has planned shall be completely demolished. And he will live for you the rest of his life, O oh Lord. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for everyone. We thank you for Brother Jacob who is traveling. Be with him, O oh Lord Jesus. We pray for Brother Sisi and others who are here and traveling, O oh Lord. And above all, Lord, we pray for our Brother Joseph Udom. Thank you for keeping him. Bless him, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you for Sister Grace laying down her life for the family, Lord, for Mong Kong and his family for healing him, O oh Lord. And there are others who are in need, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for them. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Let it be in each one of our hearts. For this we have pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us till our Lord Jesus returns in his glory. Amen. 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 Be seated. Thank you all for coming. Brother Matthew is here. We praise God. Please greet him. And uh, we have food for everybody. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming, sister. I forgot your name. Anita, Anita, your husband is there in the back. You know, he didn't come. Huh? God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. We have uh, food. Maybe we'll let the visitors go first and Anita too. God bless you. Bye. Come.